Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to, I've been asked to, to discuss about what I perceive to be ADR 2.0, which is basically maybe how ADR has evolved. ADR stands for Integrate the Section Reentry. Just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. These are my disclosures. So ADR 2.0, in my perspective, is better understanding of subminimal vessel trauma, better techniques to prevent subminimal hematoma nowadays, new techniques to access uh, subminimal space, and a technique that has evolved to more integrate wire escalation, plus or minus ADR, than ADR right away. You'll see that the technique has evolved a bit, and there are better wires to re-enter into the true lumen. <clears throat> Just focusing on those two uh, elements, in order of uh, order of trauma you can make to a, a dissection plane, obviously contrast guided will be the worst, followed by the knuckle. And the least traumatic uh, event is a cross bus dissection or a straight wire that's next to a true lumen or a reentry spot. These, these are likely the least dramatic, and you can take advantage of this. And obviously, what will be a factor of hematoma is a large inflow from balloon dilation and injections. So it has evolved and has been adopted widely in practice that the trap liner has been an extremely helpful tool to prevent hematoma formation and because you can trap all devices in six French, with the guard extension, you, it serves as an inflow occluder during your ADR, so you prevent filling the subminimal space with blood. It makes ADR possible even in six French if you need to do it, and you can increase support by power anchoring just by inflating the balloon into the. So there's a lot of things you can also use it retrograde. I'm just focusing on the on the integrated ADR uh, part of it. So it's cross bus essential, in my opinion, it's just an opinion, it may not be shared by all city or experts, experts, but I don't think it's, it's essential in all cases. There are clear advantage of the cross bus, however. It, it, it helps to keep the dissection plane in the outer curvature of the artery, creates a nice dry re-entry re zone. It's a poor starter, but we all agree that it's a great finisher. However, it has this advantage. It adds significant cost to the procedure. It tends to track branches, which can lead to perforation. It pushes the reentry, usually more distal, and seldom reenters in its own, uh, on its own. It's been, it's been described in 30% of the initial studies. I can tell you in, in practice that it's much less frequent than 30%. So we have new techniques now that we can take uh, advantage from. First of all, we can access the subminimal space uh, when you have an ambiguous cap. I know uh, some other speaker may be t talking about that, but the move the cap techniques has made us more efficient to get access to the subminimal space when the ambiguous cap is present with the, uh, the scratch and go in base. And I'm sure, um, so the scratch and go is basically uh, puncturing the, uh, the, the, the plaque and then get a microcatheter in and then get a knuckle going. And the base will be balloon-assisted subminimal entry, where actually we we'll create a dissection and get, get a wire and knuckle down. So what, what is the comparison between comp contemporary ADR or ADR 2.0 versus old ADR? Let's put like a, a historical perspective to, to up to 2015, and now we have 2015 and over. Crossbus was used a lot. Now it's more to finish if needed. We had original bridge point, now we have Stingray LP. Eight French was better at that time. Now seven French is largely enough. You can do most of your procedure because a stingray LP is smaller. Ambiguous proximal cap was not for ADR. Now we have base and scratch and go where you can do it. So that's, that has changed completely. Stingray press prep was less predictable. How many times we had like stingray preps and we wouldn't see the wings of the balloon? Now it doesn't happen. We've understood how to do it. Stingray, the re-entry stick now, uh, Stingray wire, Hornet 14 or Estato 20 is certainly the one uh, we prefer. Difficult, the stick and drive was difficult as Stingray wire. Now it's possible with Hornet 14. Uh, Emetomoma management was treatments, drive, et cetera. Now we're doing a lot more prevention with the trap liner. There was long-term outcome, the debate on long-term outcome, a lot in that days. Nowadays, it's over. We know that long-term outcome are the same with the section entry or uh, or other techniques. Star was considered to be bad, and now it's not always bad if it's mini star or if uh, or uh, or investment procedure. We're talking about investment procedure at that time. We didn't know what, what it was. 
Now we're talking a lot more about this to avoid stenting. So the technique has evolved, and uh, in this uh, perspective, we can understand what we're doing now. This is a case of a difficult ADR, 71-year-old pa patient, post-cabbage, uh, RCCTO, but very ambiguous cap, I'll show that. Several source of collateral. We're doing a triple axis. It's got an EF of 15%. If I go retrograde, it will need support because this patient has a very poor EF. If I go integrate, I may be able to alleviate support. So as you can see, shooting the lima, shooting the, le the left, you see several epicardial collateral. But I want you to focus here. There's two uh, vessels leading to epicardial branch. So it is a, an ambiguous proximal cap. So we did the base technique, so basically inducing a dissection, bringing a wire, pilot to 100, that will get into the vessels, uh, the, the subminimal plane, next to the other wire that was there. Then we're, we'll be knuckling the wire down all the way to the reentry spot, and I advance the microcatheter. You can see that the microcatheter in that case, because it's a knuckle, it's inside the vessel, but I don't care. We, you can deliver your stingray it, uh, uh, with the trap liner in place, so you, 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 you take care of the inflow. We took the estato. You can puncture with the estato very predictively because it's a very strong wire. And then with the Pilot 200, we were able to reopen uh, and get a swap with the Pilot 200 and reopen the vessel with quite effectiveness and didn't have to d dissect the vessel all the way down. You can swap with Pilot 200. Um, and sometimes you fail. What you can do, you can do the Bob Slee technique, which is deflating the balloon and pushing forward. With the trap liner, now I feel that you much less have hematoma when you're doing the Bob Slee. Used to be something that was an issue. And then at this point, we did the stick and drive with the Hornet 14 in the vessel with success. Here's another case where we had like a very proximal, ambiguous course of the vessel, a very good landing zone. And uh, this is a biplane view, as you can see. So what we did in that case, we stick, it's a, basically a scratch and go, sticking with a CP12 and uh, got the microcatheter in place and knuckled a fielder XT. And look at the knuckle taking care of the ambiguity of the course of the vessel. So now we're at the distal cap with the knuckle. So you can see in both views now, so the microcatheter is advanced right there. You can see that on the left panel, it's a bit far from the, from the lumen itself. So nowadays what you can do, you can pull back a bit and redirect with very directional wires such as the, as the Gaia. But you can see now that the wire is very close to the lumen and I could deliver the stingray in place after advancing the microcatheter. So you'll see the stingray now, perfect view is on the right side. So the wings have overlapped and uh, we can actually with this very favorable position, do a stick with the Hornet 14 and then re-entered. So I didn't have to dissect the whole vessel all the way down. Uh, this is the post-tenting result. If you want to learn more about CTO-PCI, we have a second edition of our book in preparation and obviously the beautiful uh, book from Manos Brilakis on CTO-PCI. And if you want to learn more, we invite you to the MLCTO course next June in 2020 in the uh, French Riviera. Thank you very much for your attention. So, um, question, Bill. <clears throat> so, uh, obviously, how did the stick and swab came about? Um, from, can you tell us the history of that and what kind of wires we use instead of the stingray uh, wire to stick nowadays? Yeah, so stick and swap came up because Thompson's really smart. Um, Craig figured it out. None of us did. We didn't realize that we were making a track with the wire, so Craig figured it out that a Pilot 200 was good for that. Um, the wires now that I would use, you know, I usually use a Hornet 14. Um, if there's a lot of con uh, calcium or a long reach, I tend to go into a Stato 20. Um, and if I swap, I either swap with the Pilot 200 or the Gladius, the regular Gladius. So those are really what I do. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure the cross boss is dead, but it's certainly dying. Um, I do think, you know, with the Mongo now that it makes a small knuckle, that's been an interesting thing of you don't need the cross boss, you can just you know, use the Mongo knuckle and go straight to it because it's so small. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as time moves forward. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a uh, Bill, it's a great comment. I think it's, it's, if you can manage to get to your reentry zone, um, and you don't wreck your reentry zone, 
And for example, you finish with a straight polymer jacketed wire, such as it can be a Mongo, a pallet, or whatever, and you just drill the wire next to the lumen, you will not exit the vessel structure. And then you bring your microcatheter there. This, it's absolutely not traumatic to the vessel. And then you advance your microcatheter, and then you're ready to go with your stingray. So I, it, the only downside of it is that because you're, not, you're spiraling around the vessel with your knuckle, you get into spooky positions sometimes out of the, uh, uh, and you're not usual. So you, it's unusual position sometimes in the distal right can be on the top of the coronary. And, but you, you finally get used to it if you try it. And there's always, if you have an issue, then pull the cross bus and finish up your dissection. There's always a, a, a time to use it. So question, I saw several pictures you actually stick in and swap in, in the middle of the RCA. And um, we learned earlier not to do that because we were less successful, we needed to go. So can you comment about that? I what, think what made you successful versus us failed? I have to tell you that in my experience, I haven't found this to be a difference. I think we we were burned uh, because of the the technology we had at that time, the stingray uh, wire, the and, and everything. Um, I think it's worth revisiting that concept of you cannot re-enter in the mid segment. I've been challenging this for for maybe three to four years, and now I don't find any difference. The only issue sometimes, if, if you have a lot of tortuosity in the mid-segment, then when you do your stick and then you try to re-enter, you get, you get in the opposite wall and then you don't. You, but what I found is that very, it's much easier to get more dis, starting proximal and f getting your dissection to get more distal than, than dissecting all the way down to the crocs and trying to make your way back because you can't re-enter. So in my experience, it's been always easier to make, to move forward, do bobsleigh, or take a cross bus at this point and then get it. We had an, a, a case like this at MSCTO, if you remember, where we uh, actually, I, I failed in the, the, the mid right and it happens. So then I pulled the cross bus, went down and could re-enter, but I didn't change my, the likelihood of overall success to that case. I just attempted to do it Without the boss, didn't work. Then with the boss, usually you'll be you'll be committed to go a bit further with the boss. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah, Stefan, could you just uh, talk through quickly your algorithm for a big tissue plane between the stingray and the artery, and oh, yeah, the that, potential for electrifying the arteries to try to enter? Have you tried that experience? I think I, I think the uh, it's 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 still a very difficult uh, situation. Um, uh, what, what Kevin is referring is that when you're doing a retrograde injection, you see a lot of tissue between the, the, the balloon that's deep into the wall and, 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 your, and your lumen. One thing you can do actually is to stick, and then if you don't get, but you feel your wire has got more superficial, you take your, you take your, your, your stingray out, with your, tra with your trapper, and then you get your stingray on the wire that is now closer and more superficial and closer to the lumen. So whenever you gain in terms of deepness towards more superficial layer, I tend to take this, uh, this as an advantage for subsequent stick, but this is now possible because of, uh, uh, because of trap liner, because then you don't fill during all those exchange your, 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 your subminimal space with, with blood. So as long as you make sure that you're doing a fast, a fast, a, a, a fast exchange and everything, when you get to some more superficial and position, because how many times when you're doing a stick and swap, you get your wire to be like that close to the lumen, right? But you should take advantage of it. You're right there. So leave that wire there, exchange, take it out, and then load your stingray on it, put, put this back and re-stick. One, one final question, and this is for the panel. <clears throat> I know we're using different wires, not pre-shaped, so how do you guys shape your wire? Start with Jason. Do you add a secondary shape or do you just do one millimeter shape? I usually just do a one millimeter shape. Unless I uh, do have a large tissue plane that I need to puncture through, then sometimes I'll add a little bit of length to it. I actually use the wire introducer to create the small tip uh, uh, yep. shape. Uh, I typically have gone to just using a Stato 20 as my primary re-entry wire now, and, um, and I found that once I have re-entered, I have a little bit better tip control, and I tend to uh, catch plaque a little bit less than I ever did with the, um, with the original Stingray wire and also even with uh, Hornet 14. 
Perfect. This is a, a good subject. Tony, what do you think? Yeah, almost exactly. We, we usually just make a very short tip, and we still use the Hornet, especially if there's not a lot of calcium or distance, but, uh, but quick to, get, to go to the Estado as well. Yeah, same. I, I start with trying to mimic the shape of the original Stingray wire with the Estado 20 or the Hornet 14, and then escalate as needed based on how far away it might be. Yep, same for me, uh, but but just to uh, drive home the point of lengthening the, the bend, uh, I've had to do that many times now, and I think that has been successful. Bill? It's the same. Same? Sure. Everybody same? For sure. Okay, so uh, the next speaker, I'm looking forward to his talk. He's normally funny uh, <laughs> most of the time. Question? Question? Yeah. In the audience. Uh, do you want to anybody take that or should I just answer? Go ahead. Take it. Take it. They're stiffer. They have better penetration power than the original Stingray, which is just a copy of a Pro 12 and not as good a copy as the Pro 12. And so the Hornet 14 has higher penetration power than a copy of the Pro 12, and Estado has way higher penetration power with the Stingray wires. So we found that by switching to stiffer wires, we could do better. And there's no fear of perforation because you're in complete control of what's going on. That's always the issues with those stiffer wires. So that's what led to the change. That's the thing for anybody involved in CTO PCI. If you haven't been to a meeting in a year, you're behind because things are always changing. We're always evolving. We've got better technologies, better concepts, better tricks. And that really is a big key is to always be evolving. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer the question, why did I start doing it? Because Bill told me to do it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that's how we learn, is you learn from your colleagues and you learn by going to meetings and talking to other people and learning new and different techniques. And so, so that's the, I think, to, to dovetail on Bill's point is, is you've got to get out of your own silo and you've got to get out and learn from other people. A lot, uh, yes, yes. There's only one perforation related to a Stingray that I know of in all the thousands and thousands and thousands that have been done. And that was somebody who did about 14 sticks out each side. So fenestrated. Again, and when they put the stent in, it ruptured probably because they had just. Which is going to trash your lumen anyway, so yeah, you don't want to yeah. do it. Yeah.